You and Your Young Child, a program of information and services available for you and your child from prenatal to age five. You and Your Young Child has been brought to you in part by the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. Stop! Where are we going? Don't get left behind. We're waiting for you here at the Sternberg Museum, where there's always new opportunities for... Discovery Under the Dawn. Hello, and welcome to You and Your Young Child, the program devoted to early childhood. My name is Dana Stanton, and I'm the coordinator of Early Childhood Grants for USD 489. And with me today is Lindy McDaniel. Good morning, Lindy. Good morning. Now, Lindy, tell us what organization you work for and what do you do there? So I work for Tazin's Autism and Tertiary mm -hmm. Behavior Supports, quite a long title. Mm -hmm. um, we are a grant project that is affiliated with the Kansas Department of Education. Mm -hmm. And what I do there, I'm the Early Childhood Coordinator, so I work with teachers and other professionals to support mm -hmm. giving best practice to students with autism and other tertiary behaviors. Mm -hmm. Now what are you talking to us about today? Um, actually, I'm talking about mm -hmm. something that's not specific to autism and tertiary behavior, but just good practice for all kids, and mm -hmm. that is being consistent with classroom, mm -hmm. or with, I'm sorry, I'm a classroom teacher, as you can tell, yeah. uh, with routines. So being yeah. consistent with those routines, because they, they mm -hmm. get consistency at school with those routines, but it's also important to have consistency at home mm -hmm. with routines. So why is that important? Why is it important to have a routine? Well, if you think about it, think as an adult, we mm -hmm. have the ability to manage our own mm -hmm. routine. Um, maybe it is that we schedule an appointment and then we have lunch and then we finish our day with other mm -hmm. work, work assignments. But for a kiddo, he doesn't really know what mom and dad have in store for him for the day unless we tell him those things. Mm -hmm. um, and so that creates a big stress and it's almost like, well, I don't know why they're having me put my shoes on, so then I have a power struggle because I don't know why I'm doing yeah. it. But if we can simply just narrate what's happening for the child, for mm -hmm. example, we're gonna get up tomorrow morning and we're gonna we have breakfast, brush our teeth, get our clothes on, and then we're gonna go to daycare. Tomorrow is a school day. And mm -hmm. just having that pattern of knowing what happens, mm -hmm. oftentimes that can even benefit you if you're you know, putting them to bed at night and that's part of your routine mm -hmm. to talk about the next day's routines and saying tomorrow's a home day because maybe they'll possibly sleep in yeah. by telling them that yeah. information ahead Today, of time. Tomorrow's the day when we all sleep late. Yes, yeah. that's hopefully the yeah. intent, fall yeah. asleep and sleep late. Mm -hmm. So what happens if the child starts to resist those sort of things? So I'm glad that you bring that up. So um, in my position as a autism and tertiary behavior consultant, oftentimes we have that issue. Um, it can be related to their autism or other challenging behaviors, but it also can just be related to a child that has is really stern and wants what he wants and wants mm -hmm. to be in charge. Mm -hmm. And so by adding visuals to their day, we can mm -hmm. help them with that process. So for example, this is a visual I put together for one of my children at my house um, and it just says exactly what he needs to do in order to get ready for bed and as you can see it's in a picture frame so it can just sit in the bathroom on the counter and it's really simple mm -hmm. and it could just be this visual is enough we know kids think in pictures till the age of nine mm -hmm. um, and so all kids could benefit from this and it prevents that power struggle of why is mommy having me get in the mm -hmm. bathtub right now. Well, it's part of my routine. It's what I do right now. This is right what now. I do today. Right, mm -hmm. but for other kids, it may be important that this actually could become a dry erase board. So the child could mark off as they're doing those things. Mm -hmm. Well, I know as an adult, I'm the kind of person that it's not enough to have a to-do list. I like to make yes, the check mark yes. on that so as an it's, adult. So it's there's so powerful to be yeah. like, oh, I finished I'm that finished. part. I'm yes. finished. Right, yeah. right. And this could look a variety of ways. This just happens to be one, mm -hmm. and honestly, you can just Google them mm -hmm. on internet and say, hey, a bedtime routine visual, and it'll pop up a lot of things you could print or look at and see what fits your child or your needs. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you could have your classroom teacher or special ed support help you with that if that's your situation. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one would just be another example of that. This one I just found on the internet, but I put it in a page protector and then I can just clip it to the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, the child can look at all these things and it prevents all those power struggles. It's mm -hmm. not like, oh, what is mom having me do now? Yeah. Because it's all written mm -hmm. out here. Now there are some days, you know, that you know, Monday through Friday, everything's 
fine, but sometimes things change. It's Christmas or we disrupt a schedule because we have to go to the doctor, but all sorts of things. What happens when the routine has to change? I'm glad that you asked that question. So oftentimes we can kind of build a roadmap for a child mm -hmm. and this prevents again that power struggle. So for example, I like to th think about one specifically when it's time to go to grandma's house or go to a birthday party mm -hmm. and the child's anticipating it. Seven o'clock in the morning they yeah. get up, are we leaving for grandma's? Yeah. And you have a list of 20 things to do before we go to grandma's at four o'clock that mm -hmm. afternoon. And instead of being that broken record of, I told you we're going later, I told you, and mm -hmm. all of those yucky feelings yeah. between the child. By the and time the, you get to grandma's, you're exhausted and cranky. Correct, yeah. and so is the child. So yeah. instead, if we just build that road map, and I like to do that just on the dry erase board, so it's mm -hmm. really simple. So for example, I can say, I know you're really excited to go to grandma's house, look, there's grandma's house, but we have lots of things to do before we go to grandma's house. We need to take a bath, and you're gonna, my drawings are not mm -hmm. amazing by any means, but mommy needs to pack our clothes in a suitcase, and it's really more about just me narrating and showing so the picture. Can, yeah. Who cares if you're not mm -hmm. the best drawer at it? And then I need to make a fruit salad for tonight's event, and then we need you to clean your room. Your room's really messy, and then we get to go to grandma's. Mm -hmm. So just helping with that roadmap, and mm -hmm. that actually is a great life skill for kiddos because then they start thinking in that way. So when the routine gets bigger in terms of, you know, when you're a baby, it's just about mommy saying, hey, it's time for a bath. Let's get in mm -hmm. the bath. Then we're going to do lotion. Then we're going to do read a book. But down the road, it's about homework and mm -hmm. after school activities and all these and other college things. finals and your first yes. job. And, yes. and you're and a grant so, writer and there's all the deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so by having these routines early, mm -hmm. kids just start to see there's a pattern to my life mm -hmm. and these are what I'm expected mm -hmm. to. Do. Now say there's a parent who's seeing this and they're like, oh, a routine, that's a really good idea and I have missed out on that. Where do they start? I mean, how do you get this started? That's a great thing to think about and I think as parents sometimes we say, oh, I'm doing it all wrong. I can't believe they're watching this. They're thinking, oh my gosh, no, I'm yeah. doing it all wrong. I have two children at home. I don't do all this all the time. Mm -hmm. But when I do see we're starting to have some chaos in the mornings or we're running late and I start to bark at the kids every morning, mm -hmm. let's just think about our routine and mm -hmm. let's draw it out as a family. Let's write it out or let's print a visual support or something to help that child and help you and have that conversation with them. Hey, you know what? I've noticed I've been really grouchy mommy every morning. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to make that better by doing this, this, and this. And just start small. Just think about those two or three things in your day that could use some mm -hmm. supports. And it's going to make your day that much more fun and enjoyable mm -hmm. with your child. Wonderful information. Thank you so much, Lindy. Now, if people have um, further questions or would like to talk to you or get a hold of you, do you have a contact number? We do have a website for um, different projects that Tazen puts puts on, and that mm -hmm. is ksdetazen.org. Okay, wonderful. So parents can con look, look there if they need some more information. Yes. You've been a wonderful guest. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've been watching You and Your Young Child, the program devoted to early childhood. Parents, remember, you are your child's first and best teacher. Thank you. You and Your Young Child, a program of information and services available for you and your child from prenatal to age five. You and Your Young Child has been brought to you in part by the Sternberg Museum of Natural History.